This conference will now be recorded. Hello, hello. I think this is working. Hi. We, uh, as a bishopric, wanted to reach out to all of our youth and uh, young single adults. I know that the whole novelty of receiving a, a virtual message wore off after about the second day of uh, homeschool and having to do all your classes online, but but we're excited to take a few minutes and uh, and tell you that we love you. We have been praying for you. We think about you every day, um, and we hope that you are safe and doing well. Um, we are mindful that it has been super difficult for each of you being in isolation. Uh, this is unprecedented. It's probably not the spring that you had uh, anticipated. We know that many of you have had to overcome disappointments of not being able to do musical activities, dances, the sports teams that you've been preparing for um, and, and worked for 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 a long time. So our, I mean, our heart goes out to our seniors. Uh, I am just, we're confident that your, your generation and your class will be uniquely close. You'll forever have this kind of unified bond uh, because of this whole experience. Doesn't make it any easier. Um, we've also prayed for all of you young single adults. Um, this has probably not been the college semester that you had anticipated. Um, not to mention our hearts are with our missionaries, many of whom are now, um, some have been released early, some have uh, are receiving a change to their assignment, uh, which has not been easy. I think what we all need is uh, peace, and, and that peace certainly comes uh, only from our Savior. And that's uh, a little bit of what, um, that's what we're doing here at this time. Uh, Bishop, you've been on Bishop's mind, and we felt that the very best way that we could reach out to you and help you find some joy is actually through uh, challenging you to do some family history. And uh, what I'm going to try to do in just a few minutes is demonstrate some of the different ways that we can use our time, um, and we hope that it'll bring you some joy. This this concept isn't uh, new here. I want to show you um, a quick slide that has to do with some of the promised blessings that we have received uh, from our leaders. Okay, so if all goes well here, you should be able to see my screen. But check out some of these promised blessings that we are are, are to receive from doing family history. I mean, we, I think we all would agree that some divine protections would be wonderful, more closeness and joy in our family. I like this one down here. It talks about the power to turn the hearts of our families together and heal them. I think some of us have needed that after uh, the amount of isolation, quarantine we've all been in. Um, but these are beautiful. Uh, love and gratitude for our ancestors will increase. Our testimony and conversion of the Savior will become deep and abiding. Protection from the temptation and the ills of this world. The power to change, the power to learn, the power to be sanctified. Heaven knows we've had to change and, and adapt and still try to learn and do things. Um, we'll be protect, protected against the intensifying influence of the adversary. Um, and I love this promise right to you. It says you'll be safeguarded in your youth and throughout your life. It will make you feel wonderful. And it'll give us the ability to make the Sabbath a delight. I mean, not only do I, I feel strongly that this is something great that we can do with our Sabbath day, but it's something that we can do all throughout the week. And, uh, and it'll help us. So this is not a long, it's not meant to be a long video. I want to do um, what we want to make essentially three different challenges to you. Um, we want to um, show you how to create a login for FamilySearch.org. And as it turns out, if you create a login for the Church of Jesus Christ.org site, um, it will create one for Family Search. This isn't just for members of our ward or neighborhood, though. That this is for anyone in the neighborhood, uh, any friends that want to do uh, family history. So if you're not a member of our church, you can still go to FamilySearch.org. 
Um, there's just great joy that can come from knowing where we came from, preserving those stories, um, and being able to do some genealogy work. Um, I'm going to try to show you how to at least start your family tree uh, with your immediate family. Uh, and then I'm going to show you a little bit about indexing. Um, Bishop wants to challenge us uh, as youth to, to try to index a, a, a thousand files, which I'll, I'll talk to you a little bit about. But that's our goal for April, uh, to see if we can reach that. And I'll, I'll show you how we can do that there. OK, so let me get back to my technology here and see if I can move some screens around. And uh, we should pop up now seeing the familysearch.org page. So really what you need to do is come in here and, and create an account. Now, if you are not a member of the church, I would just start right there. It's free. You don't, again, you don't have to be a member of the church to do this. Um, but there's also the ability um, for you youth to come in to the primary site, right? The churchofjesuschrist.org and to create an account. Okay, there's a little login space over here. What it's going to do is it's going to ask you for a username and a password, and then you're going to come to this screen. And when you get to this screen, there's a little checkbox here uh, where you say, I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ, Latter-day Saints. And when you do that, it's going to ask for your membership number. Okay, your parents should have that on their app. If they do not, go ahead and text me uh, or reach out to a member of the bishopric. I'm not going to put my phone number on this particular uh, presentation as it's going to be on the YouTube and going out to the interwebs. So we'll just let you, uh, you find me. We'll we'll get you done there. Um, but that's all you need. And to, to remember your birthday. Okay. Uh, and then you'll be able to have an account. Uh, once you do that, you'll be able to use that same login information when you come in uh, to sign in to Family Search. Okay. So I'm going to get signed in here. Okay, so some neat things. When you first start out, I'm just going to focus a little bit on the family tree aspect. The idea is to be able to get the tree going where you have you in the middle and it'll go up to your parents and then we can continue on, right? You'll be able to go on and continue the work. Um, it may feel a little daunting when you're starting just by yourself, but how this works is that you'll really only have to manually enter uh, the family members that are living. So you'll need to ask mom and dad for their information, maybe grandma and grandpa for their information, like birth dates. But as soon as we get to somebody who has passed away, like my grandpa here, John David Close, uh, once you've done that, it will connect you to all of the records that have been already done. And so that's the kind of thing we're looking to, to get up to one of those generations and then it'll fill in for you. It's really kind of fun. Um, I want to move up here. If you can see this little part up here that says kind of the person option. Okay. This is kind of really where you're going to start. So your name will be right up here. Um, and this is where you're going to have your information, where you were born, information, right? And then um, here's where you can start to add parents and siblings. Um, I'm not going to add any more spouses at the time. I think we're good on kids for the moment, too. Yep, see, it shows all five girls. Good times. Um, then it'll show my parents. But this is where you'll be able to come in and add your mom and dad. And then from them, you can add and add as many details as you want. This is a cool way to be able to say, hey, I want to go into my dad's record and I want to share memories, right? So you could upload photos or you could go ahead and share a story about your dad. Um, it's great to do that, especially when you're young and uh, can share some of those things, maybe perhaps from your journal, okay? So that was um, challenge number two, is to come in and start your family tree and start adding information onto it okay i want to pause for a moment and see if i can do some additional technology here i'm going to grab my phone and i'm going to see if i can do a little mirroring here hopefully you can see this 
Aha. Now you are viewing my phone, hopefully. Okay. So next cool thing is that there are some apps. Okay. So there's actually a family tree search app. So this is kind of a, a bonus challenge, I guess, uh, an invitation is to explore this app. Same login when you get in there, um, but it has some really cool things that you can do. So for example, uh, once you go ahead and do um, you know, your family and can, can connect your tree, right? So once you get your tree a little bit bigger, um, I'm gonna be clicking, by the way, just so you know how to navigate, I'm gonna be clicking down here on some of the more, okay? Some of the additional activities that they have down there. Um, and so I want to do family history activities. So this is cool. They have like a compare a face. Yeah. So it's going to ask me to sign in. Going to need to remember your sign in information. Okay. So I did this earlier. I took a picture. So you can take a new photo if you want to. Should I even try that? Maybe I'll try that right here. So you take a photo, right? You get it all lined up real nice. Maybe, or maybe we go serious. There you go, we'll try that. And I will say I want to use that photo. Okay, so now it is analyzing my face and it's going to tell me who I look most like. I accept this challenge. Okay, wow, with the smile, uh, when I did this earlier, this is awesome. Let's see, I look like Thomas Robert Perry, my third great grandfather. That's kind of cool. Um, I have a 41% match to my second great grandmother. Oh, that's nice too. I think when I ran this last time, um, this is kind of cool. Yeah, you can go through, you can see uh, who you look like. Uh, when I did my picture the first time, yeah, it said a 46 match to my great-grandmother. So it told me that I look like a, a woman from the 1800s. But one redeeming factor there, ooh, text message from Brother Walker reminding me stuff, is that uh, I did also look 45% like Amos Jones, who has an epic beard. So I was pretty excited about that. So take some time to go and look through some of these really cool activities, and uh, I think you'll really, I think you'll really enjoy them. Uh, the other app that I want to make sure you guys are aware of is the Gospel Living app. This one will require the login from that church. Same login. It's actually the same login for all of these. But this is where I'd love to have you guys share what you're learning with each other. Um, you know, we're automatically all on these circles, so you can share it with your class or your quorum, right? So if I want to say, hey to the bishopric, say, what's up, guys, right? I just found out that I look like a, a woman from the 1800s, right? I can do that, okay? So some cool things that you can do with the apps. All right, last thing. Thanks for, thanks for hanging with me here. Um, there's a section up here on the website that is for indexing, okay? And um, the nice thing about this is that it has its own training resource on how to do this. What you're really doing is people have been taking old records like birth certificates and they've been scanning them and putting them on the site. So your job is to then help read that information and type it into a database so that somebody who's trying to find great, 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 great grandpa Humbert, right? will be able to all of a sudden find that you wrote out their death certificate, you know, in whatever year, and they'll be able to connect that to their family and be able to do work for them. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the training. As I'm gonna tell you, we have two um, consultants in the ward that do a really good job, but you can come into the web indexing. You can start your own batch. Um, there is a tutorial in here that will, you know, you can sit down with your parents and walk through. So you can do one, just, you know, you can try one out. Um, and the nice thing is that we can go ahead and make a goal, right? Uh, we can come in as a ward and see as an entire ward. Thank you for this update. 
um, you know, we did, I think, 43, 43 records. And so Bishop wants us to do a thousand, which is awesome. Um, I think we can do that in the month of April, but we can't do it without your guys' help. Um, so, so jump in, learn how to do it. Uh, and then the next step after that is we'll get a chance to kind of learn and compare to how other groups are doing in the stake. Um, and so that'll be fun, right? We'll be able to, to see how our ward's doing um, versus some of the others. And that'll be really great. Um, one thing I want you to be aware of. So again, there's an overview. There's, a find, there's, there's some help resources. So again, if I wanted to do a get started, here's the guided tour. The guided tour is really uh, helpful. And again, you'll have this recording as well. You can go back. I can start the tour and it'll actually teach you what it is that you're looking at. It'll give you project instructions. So over here, it'll kind of tell you, well, here's what you're going to be doing, right? Um, and then it'll say, start with line one, right? Should this be indexed? It should. And so given names, well, uh, it's giving me a little helpful field on where I should find that. It looks like Holmes Quincy. That's what I would type there as far as the given names. And then it looks like Miller is the last name. So I'll type that there. This is indexing, taking an old record and I'm just filling out the forms. You don't have to worry about messing up, okay? Because once you submit a batch, someone else uh, who's a professional is essentially going to go in and help check all of these different records. There's some really neat tools. I know that they usually give you some, uh, some tools at the top in case there's some crazy cursive from earlier um, in uh, our country's history when everybody wrote in cursive, right? And so it'll help you kind of figure out, I don't know what letter that is, right? Um, so there's some really neat things in here. Okay, I didn't want to make this very long. Um, again, we love you. Let me put up, let me pause here and see if I can put up one more thing here for you to see. Um, just take me a second. Okay. So again, feel free to reach out to a member of the bishopric, especially if you need your membership number or if you have any questions or just want to say hello, you can, you can FaceTime us, you can call us. Um, and then Brother Adrian Escalante in the ward, you can look up his phone number and call uh, or FaceTime him or uh, Sister Susie Bird, same thing. Uh, they are like indexing ninjas and um, we'll, we'll be able to help you. Let me also go back one more time to uh, these amazing promised blessings. Take time to look over this list. I know that each of us need more peace in our life at this time. Um, I, I know we all need to be safeguarded. Safeguarded. I know we want more closeness and joy. Um, as it again, it's an unprecedented time. Um, I want to share with you my testimony, my love. This is the Savior's work. We're led by a prophet who knew way before this pandemic that we needed to have a home-centered, church-supported gospel. Um, that's what we have. That's my testimony. Um, I love you. And share that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.